it's no secret the mind can do some pretty amazing things, like how some people feel better after taking a sugar pill instead of actual medicine. But could there be more to this placebo phenomenon? A placebo is basically mind over matter, right? Well, not exactly. Typically in clinical trials, participants have no idea if they will get a real medicine or a placebo. But Harvard researchers are switching things up by studying a new concept called open label placebos. In one small study, participants were told beforehand that they would be taking a placebo for their irritable bowel syndrome. Guess what? Their symptoms still improved. Other open label placebo studies for low back pain and cancer related fatigue have shown similar results. So what's behind this new placebo phenomenon? And does it hold promise for future medical treatments? Dr. Nina Shapiro, the author of Hype, A Doctor's Guide to Medical Myths, Exaggerated Claims, and Bad Advice, joins us today in the audience. Welcome, Welcome back, Doc. Welcome back, Nina. Great to be Good here. To so talk about honest placebos versus open placebos and the difference and all that good stuff. Right, so most people when you think about a placebo, you think of something fake. You think of a sugar pill and you also think about the way the placebo effect works is that you don't know that you're taking that fake medication. So you're, you trick your brain and think that you're taking something real. What they're doing now and what this Harvard study showed is that even when they tell the patients that it's a quote unquote fake medication, their symptoms got better. And not only did they get better, they got better than if they had taken a real medication. It doesn't really make sense, but obviously it's happening. So what's going on? Is it really the medications anyway that are making symptoms better? So this is looking at irritable bowel syndrome, which is very symptom based. They're also looking at things like headaches, back pain, cancer fatigue, all these things that are symptom-based, and if you know you're taking something that's not a real medication, you still feel better. And it's pretty incredible if you think about all this medication that everybody is taking for so many different symptoms, then the question is, why are we taking so much medication? Yeah, and I, and I think it's really important, the point you're making, that these are all symptom-based conditions because we want to make clear to all of our viewers that this is not an option if you have a true medical condition that requires intervention like cancer, like heart disease. These are not symptom-based Like a true diagnosed diseases. Yeah, th this we would never advocate trying this placebo effect out, but for symptom-based right. conditions, so interesting. It, there was yeah. actually a study that was published in 2018 in Nature Communications where they did MRIs on people with low back pain, chronic low back pain, and they found differences in the MRI and functional MRI of those people who were more likely to respond to placebo. Mm -hmm. So it was a really interesting illustration that there may be something structurally or physiologically in the brain that predicts whether or not you might have this open placebo effect. Uh, and, and you, but so uh, crazy, like, well, I'm gonna give you something, but it's not gonna do anything. But yet right. it works. But it works. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's nothing in here, Drew, that is meant to treat this, but it's going to work. Right. And it works! And it's because you gave it to the person. A lot of times it's just going to the doctor or getting a quote unquote intervention or treatment makes you feel better. Even making an appointment for a doctor's office. Once you have that appointment, you start to feel better a little bit. And that, that can be considered placebo, but can, it could also be considered real. So Dr. Nina, what you're saying is so important how you do it. I mean, you can in fact say that this is a placebo, but if the bedside manner is right and you do it, mm -hmm. and I'm glad you came, and it's so good to see you, and we're gonna give you this, and... It helps. And, it's and a that's big actually... part of medicine, you, you know, to, to encourage the patient, to empower the patient, to make, make them feel like they are part of the decision-making. Well, then making. since it really works, it's no longer a placebo. <laughs> well, then it's actually <laughs> been right. studied. There, there, <laughs> then there's no such thing as a placebo. Well, so, so it's interesting. That's a, there's actually a study at Stanford that shows the bedside manner. I'm sure, Dr. Spiro, you're really familiar with this body of research where your bedside manner and the way you deliver the news to someone, even really bad news, makes a huge difference in terms of how they recover from it and how they process it. So I think it goes back to that aspect of the patient-doctor relationship and an instilling hope and that psychological benefit that sadly is sort of being lost a little bit right now, the way we're being pressured to practice medicine, where you really made that connection with the patient and you tried to frame things in a way that then they could process and made them feel better.